This is Arts Alive. I'm Linda Phillippe. My guest today is Chris Stubbs, a truly amazing watercolor artist who lives in Carlton. Welcome. Thank you. It's good to be here. It's, it's great to have you. And you will be on the Art Harvest Studio Tour this year. I will. Okay, yes. for the second time, you for said. For the second time. Mm -hmm. I was on it about four years ago. So this will be my second time. So after a brief hiatus. After a brief hiatus, yes. Okay, you're back. I'm back. And I'm sure that people who saw you previously will, can't wait to come again. I hope. Right, and for the new people, I mean, what a treat. Now, your work is amazing, and your, your home is amazing, too. That view you have is just so incredible. Thank you. Yeah. I think we have the best view in the entire valley. I think you really do, yeah. But your, but your work is just so stunning. So you want to talk a little bit about maybe what you do and how, how you came to be? Sure. The sure. watercolor artist of renown? <laughs> well, I actually started painting when I was a child. And I was always drawn to people. Um, even as a child, I would, I would go through National Geographic magazines and um, look for faces and look for pa faces of people that were crying or weeping or had some kind of emotion um, that they carried and that they were photographed for and kept piles of them all of my life. And I would practice doing people. Drawing and painting. Drawing and, and painting people even from childhood. Really? But I was trained um, to do, to draw and paint anything. And so I would say right now what I enjoy doing the most are portraits. Um, but portraits don't sell, so I also paint um, flowers and, and other scenery. Um, what, I have, what I've discovered is that um, I am a close-up. I'm a person that sees close-up. And a landscape painter would see things far away. They would... Mm -hmm. um, the misty blur, the, misty the blur, purple hills or whatever, all right? All of the shapes. Mm -hmm. But, but they're interested in what's far off, and I'm really interested in what's close. So when you see me paint flowers, I'm painting close-ups of flowers. Um, I'm painting close-ups of people. Um, I could be very entertained just painting hands or something like that. You know, it's, it's interesting that you say that you were drawn to emotional faces even mm -hmm. as a child because that's one of the things I think is so amazing. And I know this sounds like a funny thing to say, but I think that you do old people yes. very well. And, you know, it's, it's easy to draw, to me, I would think, it, it, you know, a beautiful young woman. Mm -hmm. You think, oh, she's so pretty. And you, you draw it, and she's like, wow, and she looks just as pretty as she does in real life. But the way that you capture age, to me, is just incredible. I mean, the detail mm -hmm. and the emotion. And, you know, it, it's, it's so difficult, I think, to convey that in a way, but how you get the experience and the wisdom and maybe even some of the melancholy, it just comes through. And I think you really, really, you are so amazing. What a gift. Thank you. Thank you. I really enjoy painting old people. I love old people. I'm not there myself, so I should love old people. I don't know, but you have such smooth <laughs> cheeks, you know. You got to get the ones with the really big firm ones. So no, it, but it is, it's really amazing how well you do that. Yeah. Well, I've been working on a series. My dad has dementia, and he's um, close to 95 now, and still in, in pretty good health except for his mind. But I've been working through that with him since my mom died and actually photographing him. He doesn't understand that I can hold my cell phone up and take pictures of him. <laughs> <So> <laughs> he doesn't know what I'm doing. So, <laughs> so I do that, and I've done um, a number of paintings of him. And they've actually won some awards and traveled um, over the, the, one of them has been down in California at, at a big art show called Watercolor West, which is an international art show. Um, but anyway, so, so I'm just very intrigued by, by wisdom. I'm intrigued by mm -hmm. the passage of years and what people learn as they grow older. But, you know, it's so interesting because you were drawn to that even as a really young person. Yes. And, yes. Uh, you know, and where did that come from? What an interesting thing. That's just you. It's, it's how you came here, you know? Well, it is me, and I, mm -hmm. I believe that it's a... God-given gift, mm -hmm. and so 
um, that's what he wanted me to paint. <laughs> I love that. So, does your father recognize himself? No, no, he doesn't. He probably pictures <laughs> himself in his mind's eye as much, much younger. <laughs> <laughs> right. Everybody who's old that I paint pictures mm -hmm. himself as much, much younger. Right. But he is, um, he, I've shown him one of the paintings, the other one I didn't show him because it, it was a painting that, um, it was a picture of loss and I, I just didn't that want to show it That would have been painful. Exactly. I mean, he might not have really understood it, but it would, he would have caught the emotion of s sorrow. Or yes. Pain. Right. Yes, exactly. Okay. Um, the other one is, is memories of, of the big catch, and he's kind of describing a big fish that he caught <laughs> one time. <laughs> oh, lovely. <laughs> At least in the painting he is. <laughs> so now you, you're talking about the fact that you do, um, you, that you teach, mm -hmm. and also that you're working on some uh, becoming credentialed. You want to talk about well, that a little? Um, I am I am teaching I'm going to be teaching in North Carolina next year and also in South Carolina and Indiana and um, there are a lot of really really awesome watercolorists who teach all over the country and they make a living by doing that and <clears throat> they have something called a signature membership signatures mm -hmm. after their names and oh, it would be kind of like I guess getting a PhD in watercolor. Right. But okay. in the watercolor world, if you can write certain signatures after your name, certain initials after your name, then it says that you're competing on a national level and you're really So good. it's not just like MFA or something like that. No, no. Or something so, more so, particular. Yes. So the two largest watercolor national watercolor societies are the National Watercolor Society, which is down in California, and then the American Watercolor Society in New York, mm -hmm. and and there's it's very stringent about how you get accepted into the show. But you're competing, maybe 80 slots uh, for, and they send in probably 1,500 to 2,000 paintings. Wow! So to get selected for that show, you're you're competing in a big big group of very well known artists as well as not so well known artists. Mm -hmm. And if you're selected, exa for example, for National Watercolor Society, which is what I'm trying to do, um, you send them the painting, and then you send them three original paintings that are very similar in genre to that painting. And they examine all four of the paintings to see if you are worthy. <laughs> so it's not just a one-off, you <laughs> that you're really this good. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And then, if you get accepted, you get to sign NWS after your name. Whoopie-doo. <laughs> but, it, you know, it, everybody... In the know, watercolor world, right, it, makes it establishes a cred sure. credentials, yeah. So that's what you're working toward. That's what I'm working toward. Well, best of luck. I'm, Thank sh you. I'm sure Thank that you. they're going to see yours and they're going to say, oh, she's by far the best. I, I don't think so. Because <laughs> it's, you're really, really good. So, okay, so, so talk about your classes a little bit. Do you, you take on people that are already fairly adept, I would assume? I do. I, I can teach beginning classes, but what I'm doing right now is once a month, I have uh, three days open where I have students who come in and they stay all day from 9 to 4. It's a long drive out to my house. Mm -hmm. Right. Up the hill, yeah. Yeah, and they come from, uh, one of them comes from as far away as um, Sandy, I think. Wow. And so they, they get a beautiful drive. They get to spend all day out at the studio. Uh, they bring their own work, and I work with them individually, and then I also do demonstrations okay. while I'm teaching. Well, that's probably one of the highlights. Sometimes, you know, it is, it, it is true. You, you know, you watch somebody work, and you think, I never would have thought to put that line there, but that just completely made the whole thing. Right, right. You know, and, and the, the fact that you can see that. Yes. And did you know that? And I'm pretty scary because I use a lot of color in my faces. Okay. And so when I put down those first washes, they, they usually are all like, <gasps> what is she doing? <laughs> I don't see any green there. I don't see any pink or purple or whatever. So, but it's a lot of fun. Patience, grasshopper. It will yes. all be revealed. Yes. <laughs> Well, the finished product is gorgeous. Thank so you. So you're going to be on the tour this year, and you yes. want to talk about the dates of the tour? The dates of the tour are the first weekend in October. The first right? two weekends the in October. The first two weekends in October and the second weekend in October. Okay. And this particular year, I will be teaching over in Hermiston. Um, with a, It's a previously agreed-upon job that I'm doing at the... Okay. Um, 
Watercolor Society of Oregon event. Okay. And so my husband will be covering for me okay. on Friday and Saturday. I'll be back Saturday night and I'll be in my studio on Sunday and the second weekend also. But I'll have all my paintings up and sure. love to have people come by, um, look at the scenery, see the things that I'm doing. And my husband's a great promoter of my art. <laughs> better than well, I am. That's his job. <laughs> that's right. It, it's probably really true. Sometimes it's very difficult to promote yourself. You can talk very Absolutely. eloquently on behalf of a worthy organization yes. Yes. or somebody else, but when it comes to tooting your own horn, we're sort of raised to not do that. I, like, I don't. It's me. It's all about me. I'm great. I mean, right. People don't do that. I don't you know? do that well. No. So maybe, but, maybe that will be a good thing. I, it would be wonderful. Now, yeah. typically, how do you work? If, if suppose you know, I, I wanted a portrait of me. Yes. Would I send you a photograph, or would I come to the studio and sit? I do, I work through photographs, mm -hmm. by photographs, but I would take the photographs of you. Okay. So I, um, mostly because most people think a good photograph is just kind of flat light, mm -hmm. and it leaves you very little to paint with. Mm -hmm. So you need to have some nooks and crannies to work you with. You do. I need shadow. <laughs> okay. And so um, that's what I go for. And I love to paint kids. I'm just having a ball painting my grandkids right now. Oh, I bet. Especially with the summer. And didn't you say they just got a puppy? They just oh, got a puppy. Oh, talk about fun. Oh, a golden retriever. Oh, darling. Nine weeks old. Her name is Snickers. Oh, how cute. <laughs> and she is cute. So, yeah. So it's just a lot of fun to paint them. And I... Do I have older grandsons, and I do. I have a painting of one of my older grandsons right now that's traveling around the state of Oregon, and um, the painting is traveling. The painting is traveling. Okay. It won an award, so yeah. Oh, so now when the painting wins an award, and you say that it travels around, yes. Where does it go? It goes to various sites that the Watercolor Society of Oregon has chosen. Oh, so like as in part of a, a show yeah, that's hung around the state. So every six months. Um, there's a big show in some city in Oregon. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> like I did one in McMinnville um, six years ago. Okay. Okay. So, so anyway, the, the top 20 paintings, the ones who have won the top awards, then travel all over the state for six months. Okay. And then I get my painting back. And so. people are taking good care of it along the way? And yes. Yes. Then the worst for they wear. They go to galleries and they okay. they go all over. So so if somebody were interested in the paintings, they could look at the Watercolor Society of Oregon website, oh. and it would tell you where the travel show is going. Okay. And where the paintings are. Great, but in the meantime, probably mm -hmm. the 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 closest way that people can access your painting is to do the studio tour. Yes. Okay. Yes, right now. Perfect. Okay. And that, once again, that's the first two weekends of October. Yes. And are you, do you show in any galleries locally? I'm not currently showing in any galleries locally. Okay, um, so. Mostly because um, what I'm, the body of what I'm doing right now is portraits. And so. And it's personal. It's personal, and most gallery owners don't want that. But, right. as I said, I do other things. Um, but, you know, showing in a gallery is a real business. Oh, sure. You have to paint what the galleries want. Right, exactly. So so you're free this way to do what you want. Exactly. Well, Chris, thank you so much for coming today. You're welcome. And I can't wait for the tour. Good. I'll be anxious to see you. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank, thank you. you.